Hi everybody. So today we're going to be working on section 5.1 day 3 which is all about translating inequalities. Before we actually start going through the notes today I want to remind you that translating just means changing to another language. In our case, it means taking words in English and translating them and changing them into math symbols. Let's start with what these words actually mean. If you see the words, the combination of words is less than, you know that it means a less than symbol. If you see the combination of words is greater than, you know that it means a greater than symbol. If you see the combination of words is less than or equal to, you know that it means a less than or equal to symbol. If you see the combination of words is greater than or equal to, you know that it means a greater than or equal to symbol. And then it gets a little weird. So those are kind of the basics. Now the next part is where we've got some kind of unusual words. Is no more than? Well, if I don't want to be more than, then that means I want to be less than or I could also be equal to. If I said no less than, which is the opposite, then I would want to be bigger, so greater than or equal to. If I said the words at most, that actually means less than or equal to. And if I said the words is at least, that really means greater than or equal to. So, in the next few problems, we're going to be asked to do two different things. First, we are going to write our verbal sentence as an inequality. Then, we are going to solve the inequality. And then, we are going to graph our answer. So let's go ahead and get started. In problem number one, it says the sum of 15 and n is less than 8. Well, sum means plus. 15 and n is less than 8. What I want to do first in all of these problems is look for the word is. The word is is what tells you to put a symbol there. Every single one of these phrases starts with the word is. So finding that word is the same thing as finding where the symbol goes. In this sentence, the word is is paired up with the phrase is less than. Is less than means I have a less than symbol. And if I want to translate the rest of this sentence, the sum means plus, so 15 plus n is less than 8. Step number two, once I've translated, is to solve the inequality. So to do that, I would subtract 15 on both sides, and I would get n is less than negative 7. And step number three is to graph our solution. So we would put an open circle on the negative 7 and shade to the left because less than get shaded to the left. Let's turn to problem number two. The first thing I would do is look for the word is. Negative 3 is greater than the difference of x and 7. Is greater than is a group of words that starts with the word is that means greater than. If I wanted to translate the rest of this sentence, the only thing on the left-hand side of this group of words is the number negative 3. And on the right-hand side, it says the difference of x and 7. Now, I know from previous experience that difference means subtraction. So x minus 7 would go on that side of the inequality. Now, I would solve this. That's step 2. So I'm going to add 7 on both sides, and I would get 4 is greater than x. Now when I look at that answer, I notice that it's written in the wrong order. 
I always want the variable to be first, and here I have the number. So I'm going to flip that around. I'm going to get x is less than 4. Literally, the whole thing just gets flipped around. The last step would be to graph. So open circle on the 4, shade to the left, because less than means left. In problem number three, it says the product of negative one and p is less than or equal to five. I'm going to start by looking for the word is. Is less than or equal to means less than or equal to symbol. Now it says, if I translate the rest of the sentence, the product, which means multiply, negative one and p, is less than or equal to, and the number five is the only thing on the right side of the symbol. If I was to, was to solve this, I would divide both sides by negative one, and I would notice that I'm dividing by a negative. So that tells me that in my final answer, I need to flip the inequality over. Now to graph this, which is step three, I would put a closed circle on the negative five because it's a greater than or equal to symbol now. And I would shade to the right because a greater than or equal to always gets shaded to the right. In problem number four, it says the product of two and m is greater than or equal to 12 is greater than or equal to means a greater than or equal to symbol. Now the rest of this problem would be product, which means multiply, 2 times m, and 12 is the only thing on the right hand side. So if I were to solve this, I would divide by 2 on both sides and I would get m is greater than or equal to 6, then step three would be to graph this, so I would put a closed circle on the six and shade to the right. Let's try just four more problems. The first problem says the sum of four x and seven is no more than 39. I'm gonna look for the is first. We said that no more than, so you don't wanna be more than, means actually less than or equal to. On the left hand side it says the word sum, so I'm going to add 4x plus 7, and the number 39 will be the only thing on the right hand side. Now step two is to solve that. So I would subtract 7 on both sides. I would get 4x is less than or equal to 32. Then I would divide by 4 on both sides, and I would get x is less than or equal to 8. Finally, my third step would be to graph. So I would put a closed circle on the 8, and I would shade to the left. Because less than always gets shaded to the left. Let's just do number seven. We'll save number six and number eight for if we need to go over some more stuff in class tomorrow. So number seven says the quotient of a number n and two is at most 16. Now we're gonna find the is first. I circled that in the wrong color, my bad. Is at most means less than or equal to. On the left side, quotient means division. So I would write n divided by 2, and after that I would put a 16. Now to solve this, I would just multiply by 2 on both sides. So I would get n is less than or equal to 32. Now I'm not going to graph this because I don't have enough space on this number line, but I wanted you to see what is at most would mean in a word problem. Thank you so much for watching our video today. I hope it makes sense that your translating problems are going to have three steps, the writing it, the solving it, and the graphing it. Please prepare to see these in class tomorrow and we will work on them then. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.